So the film is about, so the story happens the last months of World War II and we follow this young innocent girl named Tala. When together with their younger brother and their very sick mother, they wait for their father to arrive from war. And one day when the mother gets really sick, Tala is forced to accept a fairy's help and the fairy promise to protect her. And the fairy has something in mind, so. So I'm the fairy, I play the fairy, and I'm the one who presents herself as somewhat of a savior, somewhat um, the symbolism of hope in the whole movie. But at the same time, throughout the movie, you'll develop some kind of ill feelings toward her because you know she's not really there for hope and she's not really helping, but she's persistent and she's she just tries to get what she wants and what she needs from this little girl unfortunately she really feasts on whatever is there she's a flesh-eating fairy let's remember that uh, so she feasts yeah so i wrote this story way way back 2015 actually as a short film because after i made my first short film my mentor told me like, maybe you need to make another short film before venturing to, to feature films. And they wrote In My Mother's Skin and it's, it was inspired by this French film called In My Skin. And I was watching Pan's Labyrinth at the same time. And the idea was like, try to merge that idea. The two idea of like this fairy tale and this extreme horror film in France just trying to combine and play around with it. But I forgot about it, made my first feature film in 2018 and rediscovered the concept late 2018 as well and, and approached my producers like, maybe we can play with this story. Yeah? I mean, maybe we can make this movie. But the difference between the short film and this feature film is the short film had no sense of time. I don't know what milieu uh, I really want to play. But then when the pandemic hits and I was talking and I was talking to my... It becomes more relevant in a way. Yeah. When the pan actually, when the pan pandemic hits, I was talking to my father and he was telling the story of my grandfather who was a guerrilla soldier in World War II. And he was telling me this, like the psychological impact of war the claustrophobia, the depression, the anxiety, and this external enemy. And it really sounded so familiar during the pandemic. So I called my producer and tell, told them, maybe we can set this film in World War II to mirror just. Well, I definitely, first of all, I definitely love horror films. I have made a few in the past, and I've always been excited of like seeing how doing it on set and how it translates to the bigger screen, especially when the audience finally watch it complete with the sound effects and, you know, all the different like slow takes that eventually just creeps up on you. I love that. That's number one. But number two, really, the script of Kenneth was just so lively in the fact that it was set in the 40s and the fairy in itself was such a character that felt surreal, but at the same time, real enough because of what we were all going through in the pandemic. So I just thought it would be interesting to play something that wasn't human and find a way to incorporate um, those pieces like the pandemic, the fear, the claustrophobia through her and through that entity. So who most because difficult. I'm curious, Noah. Yeah, I'm trying to think and <laughs> I think I've got it easy as the actress in the film because, I mean, the hard part, so to speak, in for my character would be wearing the layers of costume because it's a bit heavy. But honestly, like, the whole journey for me was really easy. I didn't feel any difficulties. If there were any, they really <laughs> did not make me feel it or not let us know or make us feel bothered by that. So. To be honest, I had no difficulty. I mean, if anything, it's like just making sure that I could deliver precisely to what Kenneth was looking for in the ferry and 
being consistent with that, especially the modulation of the voice. I wanted to be consistent with that because you could easily forget tomorrow what the tone you used yesterday was or how low and how freaky or slow or, you know, so that was something we would watch out for all the time. And for me, I mean, filmmaking is hard enough already. <laughs> <laughs> and even writing is hard enough already, but in production, uh, everything's compromised, but I'm so happy what you know what what it is now, like because I was trying to trying to play around with the idea of um, making the film during the production, making the film simple because of the compromises, and I wanted to we we do, I I didn't want to delete some scenes just because of like we don't have time. I want. If we delete scenes, let's make it intentional. And I think that's the hardest part for me because you're killing your darlings already. And I think that's, that's f the fun part of filmmaking. You start to create something new, create something, create something like you didn't think before. And it's really amazing for me to discover these ideas with the people I work with, which I love. Like working with these people is really amazing. Thanks for watching the You Interview channel. With over 3,000 original celebrity videos, we have one of the largest collections of celebrity interviews anywhere. So remember to like and comment on our videos and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more involved, you can become a member of the channel. Membership has its perks. You can see exclusive celebrity videos and get the opportunity to ask our celebrity guests questions. We can't wait to hear from you.